One of the number one struggles in fish keeping is algae. How do we get rid of it and how do we prevent it from coming back? There's two tools that are critical for removing algae and the first one is your hands. When you have algae built up on your glass, the decorations and even substrate, one of the most foolproof ways to get rid of it is get your hands in there and wipe it off. I use a combination of algae scrubber sponges, magnetic cleaners, and even a toothbrush to get in there and wipe or scrape it off. The algae scrubbers work great for quick cleanups on the glass and they're really good if you have a situation where you don't feel like getting your hands wet. Well, as long as your tank isn't too deep. If you have tall tanks like John's 240s, you really don't have that option. Your hands and arms will be getting wet. Welcome to fish keeping. Magnetic algae cleaners are also really good for quick touch-ups. We use them all of the time, like right before we're going to be filming videos or if we have guests coming over. But to be honest, we live out in the middle of nowhere and we rarely get guests. Some of the magnetic cleaners also have scrapers on one side, which is really good for that stubborn green algae that doesn't want to rub off with sponges. But one of my favorite algae cleaning tools is a toothbrush. Thanks, Reno. Most of my tanks are 10 gallons or less and are heavily planted. Getting a big old sponge in there just isn't going to fit, so I'll use the toothbrush. Plus, they're great for getting into the tiny areas that the sponge won't reach. The second tool for removing algae is a little more complicated, but it's definitely the most effective. That tool is the aquarium itself. What? I know. Let me explain. Algae is caused by an imbalance in your aquarium. The combination of high nutrient levels Excess light and a lack of maintenance are what's causing it to grow. Studying your tank and investigating what's causing that imbalance will not only help to get rid of it, but it'll also help keep it from coming back. Think about what's going on in your aquarium and causing it to grow. Are you overfeeding your fish, which provides plenty of nutrients for algae to feed on? Is your light on too high and for too long? Is your tank sitting right next to a window, letting all that direct sunlight in? Or have you fallen behind on your maintenance, which amplifies everything we just mentioned? With all those things in mind, you can implement strategies to help prevent it from even happening. Cut back on your feeding if you're seeing a lot of food get past your fish and end up in the substrate. This food will sit down there and decay, which will be a huge nutrient source for algae. Are you running your lights on full power for 12 hours a day? Cut back to only having the lights on for the time you're actually spending with your fish. Trust me, as long as your tank isn't in a completely dark room, the fish won't care. As long as there's ambient light in the room, they'll be fine. If you have a planted aquarium, research the plants you have and the lighting requirements for them. Most low lighting plants like your Anubias or Crips will be fine if you only have your lights on for four to five hours a day. Windows are an algae producing machine. If your tank is in direct sunlight from a window, consider some blackout curtains or blinds or if possible, just move the tank. And lastly, maintenance. Keeping an aquarium isn't a lazy person's hobby. You need to be on a regular routine of maintenance. Every aquarium is different and will require more or less maintenance than the next one. Keep an eye on your tank, test it regularly, and keep things under control. If you don't, you're just feeding the algae and it's gonna take over faster than you know it. So there you go. The two most popular tools for cleaning algae, your hands and your aquarium. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.